Welcome to Electra Online. In this video, we're going to explore and show you some examples of how to calculate the power. And of course, we need to remember that the definition of for power is work over time. Now, work can be defined in two ways. It's either the product of force times distance, or it can also be expressed in terms of the change in energy. So let's look at these three examples to see the commonality between them. We're still going to consider the equation right here. We have the work put into the system plus the potential energy initial plus the kinetic energy initial. It's going to be the final potential energy plus the final kinetic energy plus energy lost during the process. Now, in this particular case, what we're going to do is we're going to look just at the power input, which essentially is the work divided by time. And notice that work can be defined as force times distance or the change in energy. And quite often the change in energy is the best one to use. And of course, in this case, the change in energy is the change in potential energy because we're essentially lifting an object from zero height to a height of five meters and doing it in 30 seconds. So here you can see that here the change in energy, assuming that we have a constant velocity, that the velocity is very slow, we're just lifting up very, very slowly, so we don't have to worry about kinetic energy. It's simply the change in potential energy over time. And so since m and g are constants, it would be mg times the change in the height over time. So in this case, the mass times acceleration due to gravity times the change in height, five meters over 30 seconds, gives us the power required to do so. In this case, we're doing two things. We're lifting up water from a well through a height of six meters and then giving it a velocity of five meters per second. So again, how much power does that require? Well, it's work over time or force times distance over time. In this case, we can say it's the change in energy over time. And we're going to add potential energy by lifting the water up and kinetic energy by spewing it out at five meters per second, all in a certain amount of time. Now, we want to lift 20 liters per second, and then you have to remember that a liter has a mass of one kilogram. So essentially, we're doing that to a mass of 20 kilograms every single second. So, power is work over time or change in energy over time, and the change in energy is going to be the change in potential energy plus the change in kinetic energy over the time allotted. So we're going to take 20 kilograms every second, so time is one second, 20 kilograms times g times the change in height, plus one half times 20 kilograms times the change in velocity squared. And that gives us a power requirement of 1,426 watts, which is about two horsepower. And then we have an example where we're driving a car up an incline. Let's say the incline is five degrees, the car is moving at a constant 30 meters per second, and so what power requirements are there? And again, power is work over time, which is force times distance over time, or the change in energy over time. And in this case, the change in energy will be the change in height gained in a certain amount of time. Now, if we're moving 30 meters per second along the incline, we can calculate that the increase in height over time is going to be the distance over time, the distance divided by the sine of the angle or in this case, I think it's the distance times the sine angle because the hypotenuse is the distance and then the height gained here. So if you think of this as being the height gained, it's going to be equal to the distance times the sine of the angle. So to calculate the power, we take the change in energy over time. In this case, the change in potential energy, which is the mg times the change in height. And the height will be the distance traveled, delta x times the sine of theta. Now, delta x over time, that can be considered the velocity. So essentially, the power is the weight of the car times the velocity times the sine of the angle. And if we plug all those numbers in, we see that it takes a power requirement of a little over 25,000 watts. And if you know that one, watt, uh, one horsepower is 746 watts, it takes about 34 horsepower. Now, obviously, a car isn't 100% efficient. So it's going to take a lot more than 34 horsepower, but the net requirement to push the car up the incline at that speed of 30 meters per second, which is kind of freeway speed, you need about 34 horsepower. And that is how we calculate the power requirements in three very good examples.